Let us, let us pray. Father our God, let's continue to be with us as we take time or discussing matter to your names, honor and glory. Forgive us of our sin, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. All right. We're dealing with pure here. It said, a curse causeless shall not come. Disease never come without a cause. Disease what? Never come without a cause. Disease is an effort of nature to free the system from condition that result from the violation of the laws of health. Now, what are the laws of health? Pure hair, sunlight, abstemiousness, rest, exercise, proper diet, the use of water, trust in divine power. These are the true remedies. You see, where sickness is concerned, many a times, many a times what we'll do, many a time what we'll do where sickness is concerned is that we'll, we'll try all, a lot of, lot of different things we'll try. We'll try sometimes, especially persons who have cancer, they try all the green juice, all the carrot juice, all of those things, right? And next thing again, we will found, we'll find out where persons who are sick, they'll come to us with our consultation, put them on the laws of health. And as soon as that happens, they go to someone else, they hear another thing. They go to someone else, they, they hear another thing. And persons out of fear trying many different things. But the Lord said, what? He said, these are the true remedies. So no matter what remedy you come about with, pure here, sunlight, abstemiousness, rest, exercise, proper diet, the use of water, trust in divine power. These are the true remedy. You know, one time, long time ago, when I had just become a missionary, I think it was my first, I think it was my first or second missionary trip that I was going on. And um, a friend of mine asked me to visit someone who had cancer for about 12 years. They, they had a lot, they had money and things like that. No, I did not know much then, but I went. When I reached there, um, the husband, I remember him sitting in a, a, a chair, like a big iron chair, that was iron chair that you, you take picture. And he just folded his arms and looked like a king sitting on his throne. And while I was there talking to the wife, I remember him saying to me, he said, look here, young man. He said, there's nothing that you can tell us about cancer that we don't know. Me and my wife, we study cancer right through. My wife have cancer for... Over 12 years, we have spent millions of dollars, and there's nothing that you can say to us that we don't know. But what I'm doing for a while, I'm just tolerating you. I said, okay. He said, furthermore, I'm a prophet. I'm a prophet. He was a one of those first day church, and he was a prophet of the church. So I was so glad when I heard him say that he was a prophet. So I said, like, oh, you're a prophet. Then you'll understand what it means what, what, what about um, the prophet. I said, well, I'm a Seventh day Adventist. And at my church is a little lady by the name of Sister E.G. White. She's a prophet of our church. He said, yes, man, I, I know of her. I read her writing. She don't write too bad. She, she kind of write okay. I said, okay. Well, all I'm going to say today is what God has given her um, for people. That's, that's the only thing I'm going to say today where your wife is concerned. He said, okay, go ahead. And I remember when I started presenting the, the laws of health. After I reached um, probably half an hour into it, he stopped me. And he said, but this is human and social biology. He said, this is simple. He said, I've never looked at it from this um, angle yet. And I remember when I finished, it was late and I had to move out. I take the following day. So I could not stay to put them on any herbal treatment or no supplements or anything like that. But I told them not to follow the eight laws of health to the T until I returned. I went and I spent a month overseas. And when I came back, I went around there to look for them. When I went, Man, I saw the wife run come. She was so happy. And I was wondering what was happening. Lo and behold, she carried paperwork to show me that all of her reading normalized. And um, she was cancer free. And just by the eight laws of health, she followed the eight laws of health to the T. And this is why God can say, these are the true remedies. Now, the thing that happened is about, about probably six months after, the husband decided to resign from his work and to go back to school because he wanted to open his own business. And she was a supervisor at her job. And um, 
she wanted to go back that her husband could um could you know get the privilege to to go to school that him can have him own business we should be more money for them and i said to her i said look here sis no i said when you come out of cancer you need to rest at least two to three years first being obedient to the laws of health before you can go back to work she said no she's not gonna stretch i said sis if you go you're gonna die she said, no, the, job, the part that they're giving her is no stress. I said, okay. And she went. And she went out and about a few months after, the sickness came back. And it came back more miserable. And within, a, within a, 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 about a month, she was dead. That husband no longer wanted to open his own business any at all. You understand? And um, I can't just say this. The Lord said that go and sin what? No more, let a worse come, curse come upon you. And one, one thing that I found out is that whenever we reach a death door, the only thing that is worse than death door is death. Okay? All right, so let's move on. It said, fresh, pure hair is most essential to sustain life. We can live for weeks without food, days without water, but only minutes without hair. In order to have good health, we must have good blood. For the blood is a current of life. It repairs waste and nourishes the body. When supplied with the proper food element and when cleansed and vitalized by contact with pure hair, it carries life and vigor to every part of the system. The more perfect the circulation, the better will this work be accomplished. So if you can see one of the reasons why the mask is being introduced, um, as I said, is to make sure that we are not able to get the pure hair that we need every time that we breathe out the carbon dioxide or we inhale back the same thing it weakens our immune system and this is just to wait until they are able to come back you see let me tell you something Bridget. jamaica is so hot now that no virus can survive out here not one you understand so this corona thing that is here it will not survive in this heat now but what is driving the coronavirus is fear fear, fear is driving it right the, the amount of person that die from every country just because of the ordinary fresh cold. Nobody die from, 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 from anything else anymore but corona, right? If you have this problem, it's corona. If you have that problem, it's corona. It comes like shark. No matter what happens out of sea, as soon as somebody um, is killed, it's a shark, right? Corona get the blame for everything now. It said, its circulation should not be hindered by tight clothing, our bands are by insufficient clothing of the extremity. Whatever in the circulation forces the blood back to the vital organ, producing congestion, headache, cough, palpitation of the heart, and indigestion is often the result. If you recognize something here, is that um, a lot of persons, because of not getting adequate amount of hair, can come down with can come down with. Come in. Yes. You can come down with um with headaches, with car palpitation. I don't know. Just a minute, please. All right. There is something that is on the screen. Where it come from? Holy God knows. <laughs> That's all I guess at you. Right, so I'll try it out. I don't know if you see the same thing on your screen, but it just pop up and it's getting bigger like Corona. It's just spreading, right? So it said, in order to have good blood, we must breed well. Breed what? Well, let me ask the question. What is happening here? Right? Huh? All right. Can we, while having on the mask, can we breathe well? No. You see, we have to obey the laws of the land now. But Bridget, let us not be fooled. Let us, as long as we are not in the presence of someone, let us um, keep the mask uh, at, a, at a point where we are able to breathe freely, right? He said, full deep inspiration of pure air, which fills the lungs with oxygen, purify the blood. They impart it a bright color and send it a life-giving current to every part of the, of the body. Good respiration, to every part of the body, good respiration soothes. The nerves, it stimulates the appetite and render digestion more perfect. 
and it induces sound, refreshing sleep. You know that if someone has high blood pressure, they can regulate the the the, the, the sure. pressure just from proper breathing. Um, do you know that one time they did a study on the Jamaican Rasta? Because they found out that most Jamaican Rasta uh, pressure was very low, and they were wondering if it was because of the ganja. Because the, the Rasta was saying that the ganja is what allowed them to have this low pressure. When they start studying, they found out that it had nothing to do with the ganja, but it's the way they smoke the ganja. They said they normally pull in the ganja for about for about seven seconds. They hold it for another probably um, five seconds, then release it slowly, right, for probably another seven seconds. And it's this manner of breathing that allowed the... Well, the techniques of breathing. Yeah, these techniques of breathing that allowed the, the pressure to be low. So they said the industry know this so well that they invented a machine called respirate to regulate breathing. And you can lower your blood pressure just from breathing techniques, right? So just by breathing technique, you can lower your blood pressure. He said this. So think, yeah, go ahead. Move your cursor down at the bottom and see if that's the case. It looks like you touched something. Is either that or your screen going back? Just better hold it money and it's a hope, sir. Um, it's not so. All right, continue. Just, just continue. It's not your cursor, so it maybe it just look like you touched something inadvertently. Yeah, probably that. All right. I don't know what is happening, but all right. Okay. We said the strength of the system is in a great degree dependent on the amount of pure air, pure fresh air breathed. This is necessary for mental alertness that we do a proper fresh air. Why do you think we're admonished to head for the country now? Can we get proper fresh air in Kingston, right? And the boulevard, those places where it is so near to, to the River Tide City Dump. It's impossible for us to get um, proper fresh air, okay? My technique has just sorted it out for me, right? Okay, to God be the glory. All right. It said, this is necessary for mental alertness that we do have what proper fresh air. Air is a free blessing of heaven, calculated to electrify the whole system. Air must be in constant circulation to be kept pure. So while we sleep at night, one of the best things for us to do is to make sure that our windows are open. You don't have to open it wide like, oh, I hope my own. An inch, two inch, and it's okay. And the, the more windows that are open, is the better the circulation. It's like a tin of milk. If you bore one hole and try to pour it out, it's hard to come out. But as soon as you bore another hole, it flows out freely. So is it also. As soon as you have more than one window, then you have a better hair um, circulation, a better hair flow. He said, let there be a current of air and an abundance of light in every room in the house. Sleeping room should be so arranged as to have free circulation of air day and night. No room is fit to be occupied as a sleeping room unless it can be thrown open daily to the air and sunshine. Now, these, especially these um, workplaces that are now built, Sister White call them, say, say that Satan is the one that are building these, these high rising, um, these workplaces that has no window and that you have to depend on just the, the air condition only, right? Because he knows that everyone will be breathing, breathing in back everybody um, hear that it breathed out and in the long run it will create sickness. He said those who do not open the home to pure hair is sometimes irritable, sluggish. All the windows are closed in their home. So sometimes you wonder why am I so sluggish? Why am I so ir irritable? So you go out there you spend, you use 2,000, 5,000, 10,000 buy some supplements not working, not recognizing that we need just to open the window. Just to open the window. He said, this may result in chronic sinus condition of respiratory issues, lack of good sleep, other illness, or difficulty staying alert. You know, I remember once we were doing water for training, and there's a lady that she went to all over, she go to England, she go to America, she went all over, because she and her son could not sleep in the night. They were there up, and none of them could sleep. And she heard about us, and she came every day, every evening, 
sat in the class, but she could not, we could not see her because as, as the class over, we had to go home. The time I think class over by about nine o'clock. And one night she decided that um, she not, she, anywhere we go, she'll, she'll go. And we were there till late doing consultation and helping person. We left there about 11.30. She left, she had for Tom with us. And about 12 o'clock, we started a consultation with her. And we had to do a consultation from 12 Bridget until three o'clock, trying to convince this lady to open her window. Because we found out by the consultation that the, the problem is that she sleep with her window closed. Why? She afraid a rat, she afraid a post, she afraid a lizard, she afraid everything. And when we spend those quality hours, and she finally decided that, okay, I'm gonna hold the window. The following day, we didn't see her. The following day, we didn't see her. So we called. And when we get her, we said, what's happening? We didn't see her come. She said, she's so embarrassed. Because when she go home that night and home all the windows, she said she and her son slept so, so much that she was late for work and she could not wake up the son. And from that moment until now, she never have that problem again. So it's very important for us to get adequate amount of fresh air. And one of the best places to get those fresh pairs, air is where in the country. Whenever you're building your home, as a matter of fact, a lot of us running, running away now to the country. We don't have no money to build. The, 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 the standard house. So a lot of bamboo huts will be going up and all manner of different huts will be going up. So we'll have a lot of pure air coming through bridges. He said at night, crack the window at least one inch so fresh air can come in, right? The window should be open and the binds fastened back and the air left to circulate freely from, for several hours, if not all day, to the sleeping apartment. In this manner, the bed and clothing will be will become thoroughly aired and and the impurities will be removed from the room we know that um oxygen kill bacteria and those things we know that sunlight kill bacteria and those things right so even when you sleep i said when you sleep in the morning when you get up it's not good to, for you to spread up your bed right away the first thing i must do is spread down the bed that and hope the windows that the sunlight that the oxygen can go through and, and destroy any virus or bacteria that is there and then you spread the bed. He said, room that are not exposed to light and air becomes damp. Beds and bedding gather dampness and the atmosphere in this room is poisonous because it has not been purified by light and air. Various diseases have been brought on by sleeping in this fashionable health destroying apartment, right? Various what? Disease has been brought in by sleeping in these health destroying apartment where you cannot hold your window freely but you cannot get fresh air. In pleasant weather, the sick in no case should be deprived of full supply of fresh air. Fresh air will prove more beneficial to the sick than medicine and is far more essential to them than their food. If you notice something when you go to the hospital, when you're admit admitting on the ward, so probably sometime you might get fresh air, they might leave the window open sometime. But what I think that I recognize that at most of the time is that some light is left on. And you know that we should be sleeping in total darkness. And next thing that we realize again is that the patients are not getting enough sunlight. They are indoor all day. And every cell in the human body has a receptor, has a door for vitamin D. So we are told that the doctors, where, where do we find the, the eight doctors? They are outside, right? You want water, you want pure air, you want sunlight, all of these things. They are what? They are outside, right? Every breath of vital air in the sick room is of great value. Although many of the sick are very ignorant of this fight, they feel very much depressed and do not know what the matter is. A draft of pure air through their room would have a happy, inv invigorating influence upon them. So as medical missionary, when we go out, we say, people, you know, we have been overseas on medical missionary um, trip in the winter. And while in the winter, the, the heat is on, all windows are closed. What we do? We hope my few of the windows them at least an inch to make sure that even though it's cold, we get in what? Fresh air. Fresh air coming just the same. My brother had some problem in the States and in the winter, he could not sleep. And I asked him, I said, look here, bro, just crack the window one inch, right? Don't, don't think about the light bill. Crack the window one inch, allow fresh air to come in. And he used to sleep and snore hard. And when he started doing that, the snore had subsided. He was able to sleep much better. The sick room, if possible, should have a draft of here through it day and night. The draft should not come directly upon the invalid. 
right? So it's not good either when we to put our bed right under the window and stuck the head right under the window where that job of fresh air coming in. If your immune system is not strong, you can get sick also, right? So it's not the best thing that. He said, upon the skin is million little mouths. Upon the skin, it's million little mouths are closed because they are clogged by the impurities of the system and for want of air. They breathe the same air over and over until it becomes impregnated with the poisonous impurities and waste matters thrown off from the bodies through the lungs and the pores of the skin. So some other thing again, when we go to exercise and we, we walk and we sweat in the t-shirt and it's probably some down the track suit and uh, we put it down, then the following morning with all of those impurities in it, we might take it up back the following morning going walking, that can be dangerous also. So it's best when you finish walking just to cool down a little and bathe, put on clean clothing. Many houses have no special provision for proper ventilation and to secure it is difficult, but every possible effort should be made to arrange the sick room so that a current of fresh air can pass through its night and day. So don't do like a person out there is a building, the house is with a few little windows. Make sure that most of your house is made from windows. Amen? In such cases, windows and doors should be open in an adjoining room and thus let the fresh air enter the room occupying the sick. So the sick need what? Fresh air. Many who have died of consumption might have lived if they had breathed more pure air. Fresh outdoor air is as healing as medicine and leaves no injurious after effect. Do you know, Virgin, that is extremely important that if I have once a month, we drive to the country. One of the, I think the best um, country we have, um, parish we have in in Jamaica here, yeah. the best parish that we have in Jamaica. Yeah. I know that all of you know that it's Portland, right? Portland is the best parish we have in Jamaica here. Yeah. So when you go there, the trees are, the, the trees, they are, they are massive, right? And a lot of fresh air, right? So one of the things that you can think about, don't watch the rain that is falling. And we need the water also. But when you're heading for the country, try to head for Portland, amen? Mambo not too bad either. He said, during the sojourn in the wilderness, the Israelites were almost continually in the open here where impurities would have a less harmful effect than upon the dwellers in closed houses. But the strictest regard to cleansiness was re required, both within, both within and without their tents. No ref refuse was allowed to remain within or about the, en the encampment. All right? The Lord said, and, and when I remember that, I don't know if it's, com I don't remember if it's coming up, but also when you sleep at night and um, when you're in the, the kitchen in the, in the evening hours preparing the meal uh, and or in the day hours preparing the meal, we have a tendency to peel the fruits right, and the vegetable and we'll tie it up in a bag and, and keep it inside. No, that's not the best thing because as long as you're, you're there, when the things start breaking down, when it starts decaying, it releases a gas that allows the hair to become impure. So while you hope the window gets it fresh air, in the house itself is impure hair that is circulating. So the best thing to do, anything that can decay must be thrown outside the house at all times. It must not remain in the house, okay? Or indoor. Every cell in our body requires oxygen in order to function. If the hair we breathe is not pure, then we force our body cells to function and this impure oxygen, right? This is taken from the American Lung Association has declared that up to half of all illnesses are either caused, caused or aggravated by polluted air. <coughs> I was trying to drink some water <coughs> quickly a while ago. It went down the wrong throat. <coughs> <laughs> oh, shit. All right, he said, <clears throat> what are the four ailments caused by not getting adequate of fresh air? Fever, colds, lung disease, asthma, bronchitis, pneumonia, headaches, faintness, vomiting, and diarrhea, smallpox, all of these things that are here can develop, can, can cause from lack of fresh air, right? If he's sluggish, why am I? So sluggish is because you do not open the window. The stomach, liver, 
lungs and brains are suffering from want of deep full inspiration of air which would electrify the blood and impart it a bright lively color and which alone and which alone can keep it pure and give tone and vigor to every part of the living machinery if you notice something oxygen the more oxygenated the blood is the redder it is when a man dies when death take over a man's body the, the blood become black it become black there is no oxygen there anymore all right so we need oxygen the less oxygen we get is is that is death start chipping in he said our cell need oxygen water proper nutrition and thorough cleansing from proper function for proper function oxygen is the one chemical essential for the cells to create energy oxygen is the one chemical essential for the cell to create what energy every minute five quarters of blood passes through our lungs to get fresh air and to release carbon dioxide right with the mass that is not going to be so easy nowadays high level of smog and pollution can increase strokes of those who live in industrial industrialized crowded cities high level of smog pollution can increase the risk of adult onset appended appendicitis okay so we need to go where we can get fresh air Harvard medical school study show elevated concentration of fine air pollution can trigger a heart attack right we need to get to the country time for us to head to the country brethren right where, where the, the houses are far apart right and where we can get fresh air plant our own produce right uh, air pollution and, and diabetes and diabetes human studies show increased risk of type 1 type 2 and all of these things because of us not getting adequate amount of fresh air um, can cause can come from not getting adequate amount of fresh air a lot of these disease is because we're not getting adequate amount of what fresh air inflammation in the body can cause by inhaling impure air which can actually affect the internal organ in the presence of chemical which cause ldl to oxidize ldl cholesterol can indirectly cause inflammation inflammation plays a major role in the pro progression of arterial chlorosis right so you keep on showing you over and over that a lot of the sickness that we have today a lot of the things that we are now experiencing the headache um the, the, a lot of these things is caused from impure here and not getting adequate amount of fresh air the smoke and the dust of the city are very objectionable get out of the city is my cry to god people get out i know dr lamb love to hear this one and nurse he said no waste vegetable or heaps of fallen leaves should be allowed to remain near the house to decay and poison the air nothing unclean or decay should be tolerated within the homes so when you have mango trees we are, we are admonished that we should not keep trees close to our home especially where the windows are because what the tree does it block the, the, the flow of of, of, um, of current of fresh air and it's it keeps sunlight out also and it allows um the place to be damp right also when the leaves fall off as soon as the leaves fall off they start decaying and they release the same gas that allows when you open the window the same impure here to come in and create sickness so you'll be wondering why is it that my window is open and yes still i am still feeling sick is because outside is not clean is not cleansed properly many suffer decay vegetable matter to remain about their premises they are not awake to the influence of these things there is constantly arising from these decaying substance effluvium that is poison, poisoning the air by inhaling this impure air the blood is poisoned the lungs become affected and the whole system is diseased disease of almost every description will be caused by inhaling the atmosphere affected by this decayed substance but i'm saying that we have to be on guard not just to hope the window to get fresh air from outside but to make sure that there's nothing that can decay that can be rot inside right because it, it will create the same problem a home can have here that yields sick condition triggers and impure triggers of impure here here freshness right a lot of us will like to buy the air freshener because they smell good right but there's a lot of chemicals 
the plug in, the plug in one, the fume from these can cause respiratory issue over time. Scented candle also can cause lead poisoning. They are dangerous for infant, small children, and pregnant women. Right? So a lot of these scented candles, right? They are what? They have lead in them, right? So as medical missionary, we, we need to know these things. Right? Of, um, our homes can have here that yield sick conditions. Triggers of impure ears are random gas found, especially in the basement. Is the second leading cause of lung cancer and lung disease. Most of this you, found, you find mostly in the, in the States or they are, the, are in the third world, country, first world country where they have a lot of basement there. Testing can be done for random gas. It can seep up even through concrete floor. Pesticides, pesticide. Studies show a correlation of inhaling pesticides to Parkinson's disease, right? So a lot of person come down with Parkinson's disease and you're wondering how come is because you're on a lot of pesticides, okay? Cleaning chemical, cleaning oven top or the stove or spraying stove on hot areas can give off fumes that can be lethal. Um, nit nitroxide, um, sulfur oxide from small portable kerosene eaters, right? Lead paint can cause brain injury also, right? So even though you paint your house, you have to make sure that the paint that you get is not the lead paint, all right? Asbestos, increase the risk of cancer and lung disease. Mold, which is very dangerous, Bridget. As long as you see any mold around the house, you got to destroy it right away. You got to um, clean up right away. If you can't clean up, you got to move out, right? Or make sure that you have, as long as sunlight is coming in and oxygen is coming in freely, you will, we will not have a problem with mold. Mucus built up, sinus, right? Um, carpets, holding in fumes and chemicals. So a lot of carpets, as much as they look clean, they are not clean. There's a lot of dust that is in it. Carbon monoxide, chimney and furnace can give off this harmful gas also, right? When you go to England and look at the sky there, the sky is like gray, like dirty, right? It is this depressing because there's a lot of uh, the, the amount of chimney gas that is going up. Right, sick building syndromes. What is sick building syndrome? Eyes, nose, throat, irritation, headache, rash, sinus. All right, glue, silicone in building. Right, a lot of the things that you use to hold up things in the building, it causes improper um, sickness also. Where fresh air is concerned, pet dander and feces. A lot of us like a lot of pet, but where pet is concerned, the amount of parasite that these pet carry is unbelievable. Right. He said, if you have pets in the home, have a litter box with antibacterial product. Remember that the children of Israel had to go outside the home to release themselves. Sand in a litter can control the odor, but the bacteria can drift through the home and circulate over a period of time, just making the hair impure. So even though you have the cat inside the house and they set up the thing rightly to hold it, no, that will not help just the same. Just a matter of time and it will create problems. Vinegar. Instead of using commercial chemicals for cleaning, consider using what? Vinegar. It will do a good job in cleansing. In cleansing. Replace disinfectant with oil such as peppermint, lemon, lemongrass, eucalyptus, etc. And you will have a nice fragrance throughout the home. Right? Vinegar, remember, must never be taken internally. Right? It should what? Never be taken internally. Vinegar is dangerous. And as we go on, you'll find out the dangers of vinegar but it's excellent for cleaning up things, right? Where can we find optimum quality of hair? Portland. If you go to Portland, you can find excellent quality, optimum quality of hair. Fresh hair contains negative ions, which help the immune system fight what? Disease, right? But the more we stay in town, the more we stay, especially anywhere off the boulevard, the more we're going to be in problem. Where can we find optimum quality of air? Early morning or late evening, right? Mountainside, right? So if you want to go to Portland and live near Blue Mountain, there's a lot of mountainous here right there. Um, it's, it's the best place to head for, okay? Where can we find optimum quality of air? Beside the sea, 
seaside. So it's also good to make sure that when you're building a house, you build a house close. To, um, by this, not close enough where you have to fret about flooding and things like that. But that current of fresh air coming out of the sea should be able to, to, to hit you in the early morning or in the night. Okay? After the rain also, right, it's good for quality fresh air. After a thunderstorm, also, we can find optimum quality of good air. Purify your home with plant. Name three house plants. Example, piece, piece of the lily, dumb cane, spider plant, snake plant, dwarf banana tree, rubber tree, fill and dantrium, pine for all these plants. They can stay indoor to help to filter, to um, allow you to get proper adequate amount of oxygen. Right? And this is piece of a lily. Um, this can be an indoor plant that, is, that can be placed inside. Right? Um, I will not go through the reading, just showing you these, these plants. And everybody know aloe, aloe vera. This also, this easy to go sun loving, succulent and help clear from a formaldehyde and benzene, which can be a product of chemical based cleaners. Paint and more aloe, paint and more. Aloe is a smart choice for a sunny kitchen window. Beyond its air click um, clearing ability, the gel inside an aloe plant can help heal cut and burns. All right. And the outside of the aloe also, that green part, that bitter part, can be used for persons who are constipated also. The spider plant. Even if you tend to neglect house plant, you'll have a hard time killing this resilient plant. With a lot of rich foliage and tiny white flowers, the spider plant battles the same thing. Benzene, formaldehyde, carbon monoxide, and xylene and solvent used in the leather, rubber, and printing industry. So it's your good it is to have these things burgeoning also indoor. We know this plant, also known as mother-in-law tongue. This plant is one of the best for filtering out formaldehyde, which is common in cleaning product, toilet paper, tissue, and personal care product. Put one in your bathroom, it strives with low light and steam humid condition while helping filter out here pollution, right? Another powerful plan for tackling formaldehyde. This fast growing vine will create a cascade. What's the name of it? Golden Pathos or Syndap Syndapsus, whatever that was the name, right? It said, this fast growing vine will create a cascade of green from, from a hanging basket. Consider it for your garage since car exhaust is filled with formaldehyde. Golden Pathos, also known as Devil Ivy, stays green even when kept in the dark. Right? Chinese evergreen. This easy to care for plant can help filter out a variety of air pollutant and begins to remove more toxin as time and exposure continue. Even with low light, it will produce blooms and red berries. Fresh air contains negative iron, which help the immune system fight disease. Ions are molecules that have gained or lost an electrical charge. They are created in nature as air molecules break apart due to sunlight, radiation, and moving air and water. Negative ions are odorless, tasteless, and invisible. In, and the invisible molecules that we inhale in abundance in certain environments. Exercise in the open here should be prescribed as a life-giving necessity, right? One of the things that, you know, a lot of persons, we do not understand the importance of the eight laws of health. And um, we, some persons will do the eight laws of health six days a week, but they decide they're not on the Sabbath because the Sabbath is a day of rest. But if you look at all the eight laws, every day we need, we need, we need oxygen. Every day we need to be temperate. Every day we need sunlight. Every day we need um, um, exercise, um, pure um, nutrition. Every day we need these things. So why skip one, right? Why skip one? When you go to the doctor and the doctor give you drug medication, seven days a week you take that drug medication. So the eight laws of health are like drug medication, the, the real natural medication for God people, right? I'm not gonna force anyone to, to exercise on Sabbath, but on Sabbath is when I preach 
the hardest, walking around and just looking at nature, praising God, giving thanks for another blessed and holy Sabbath. Hear, hear the precious boon of heaven, which all may have, will bless you with its invigorating influence if you will not refuse its entrance. Welcome it, cultivate a love for it, and it will prove a precious suitor of the nerve. It refreshes the body, while at the same time, it influences the decided the felt upon the mind, imparting a degree of composure and serenity. It induces sound, sweet sleep. All right? We're going through the, the lifestyle assessment is whenever you're doing a consultation. Whenever you're doing a consultation, there's a lifestyle where someone has to fill, fill it all the way out. And there are questions that you look at to find out what is the problem. Right now, pure here, where do you live? How can we, we live influence our health? Right? So this is one of the questions that is there. Where do you live? Why do we want to find out where do you live? It said low damp hair should be avoided as it can result in sore throat, fever, lung disease. High level of smog and pol pol pollution can increase strokes of those who live in industrial like crowded cities. Choose high elevated areas for abundance of air and light. Choose a place where there are trees and nature around the children to play and exercise the mind. And one of the best places for that is Portland. The next question we ask, why do we ask, do you sleep with your window open? Why is this important? It's a pure air at night, keep the cell oxygenated, which help with cellular repair. It helps to avoid exhaustion, fever, feeling hungry, diseases, and sluggish blood circulation. To have constant supply of oxygen to keep cells and lungs strong and healthy. Right? So this is why we ask this question, do you sleep with your window open? Because if your window is closed, all of these things will start happening to you. The next question, do you open your windows door daily? To hear out the to hear out the home. Why do we recommend this? Why do we ask this question? Pure here promotes blood circulation, refreshes the body, calms the nerves, gives good appetite and ingestion, induces what sound sleep. So as long as you're home bridging, you, the, 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 the house should be here though. Every window should be open. Even while you're not there, right? You pray and ask Gabriel to take care of things, right? And as best as possible, open up, allow sunlight and fresh air to go through. The next question we have, do you live or work in a, in a, in a smoke-filled environment? Can someone who does not smoke develop lung cancer if they work in a smoke-filled environment? Yes, they can. The air laden with smoke and dust, with poisonous gases and with germs of disease is a peril to life. And the second-hand smoker is more and more danger than the man that is smoking itself, right? So avoid smokers as best as you possible can. Avoid hearers that that is a lot of smoke there. The next question: Do you have life plan through your home? Why can plan do the do? What can plan do to help improve air quality? It purifies the air with plant in the home. Example: piece of a little dumpling, spider plant, snake plant, dwarf banana tree, rubber tree philandantra pine fir in the yard is helpful right all of these trees they are what they are helpful the next question are there any environments that you are in that do not have a good supply of fresh air what disease can be caused to an improper supply of fresh air lung disease restriction of proper air intake liver disease can cause also from that rheumatism can cause from that also neuralgia sinusitis also sore throat, fever, headache. All of this can cause if the, the place that you're living in, right? You remember they're telling that the Sahara um, dust storm coming across. It said they have it will affect a lot of persons with, with asthma and the sinus problem. Yes, when the air is not, when the place is not purified properly, these are some of the things that you, you we can expect. Okay. Do you wear tight fitted clothing that restrict your lungs expansion? What clothes are clothing item can reset lung expansion? Girdles, right? A lot of persons, they take a shortcut. Instead of we, they obey the eight laws of health, they start wearing girdles. 
right? And what girdle does? It's in the circulation. Belt. Do you know that belt is not something for us to wear as a male or female? That is our shoulders supposed to carry the weight and not the waist. Do you know that wearing belt causes constipation? A lot of time, person come to us with constipation. They have gone to doctor and all of these things and still have the constipation. I always say to them, um, gentlemen, pull it, don't wear a belt for today. Keep the, the pants waist loose. I will in some matter a day or so. They, 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 they are the freedom, right? Corset, tight bands, tight pants. My, my son, um, he went on the road and he see everybody wearing tight pants. So he decided to wear tight pants also, not recognizing that um, as, as my child, he's not as lucky as the other person who goes out there. And he said, while coming back home in a taxi, he couldn't feel him foot any at all because the pants were so tight that blood circulation that was not flowing. He said, Daddy, I, my foot could, I could not lift my foot out of the car. I could not stand up. What he had to do, Bridget, he had to take off his pant, right out there, take it all off, keep moving the foot until it's the circulation came back, and he had to walk home. It's a lucky thing he was nearby home. Walk home in just his, his Gansy alone with the pants in his hand. So all of these tight clothing that the Christians are now following. Nurse is asking a question if man should wear their pants with the underwear showing. I don't know why nurse is asking this question. These these things are from, from prison. These things are set up. Um, uh, no, man, you wear, you wear the thing close enough. You don't have to wear the... the, 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 the she's saying if we don't have a belt, what will happen? Wear the thing close enough that it can hold up without that restriction. Okay? But, and but, 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 yeah. I mean... For me, I haven't been wearing belt for a while. What I wear is suspenders. Ah, okay. So I just it. go back. Just go back to what was what men used to wear in the old days. Suspenders. And that is so true, and that's why we are told that both for the male and the female, the shoulder should carry the, the, the blood that the way. Okay. And those um, men out there, um, we have to pray pray them up. Sometimes a lot of us used to do it at two, but while wearing the pants all the way down, one thing they said to me. If you're advertising, you must be selling. Was the information helpful? Well, this is where it finished. So, Bridging, this, but let me ask first, is there any question out there? Any, anything that anyone would like to discuss? Anyone out there? Of what you just learned or uh, refresh? Brother Taylor, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. If Keeping a compost heap in your yard. Yeah. Is this wrong? Because the rotting vegetables should not be close to your window. But if it's not near to a window, can you still keep a compost heap in your yard? Yeah, man, as long as it's far away from the home, from the, from the house itself. It's not a problem. As long as it's far away. We don't keep it nearby it the be, window. It, should, it shouldn't be anything that you, that you can smell from inside. No, no. As long as you can smell it, um, it's affecting you. Next question I have, if you have a large room with several windows, how many windows should be open at night? Well, as I said, what I think you do, don't put the head under the, under the window, straight under a window. So that one, you try to keep it closed as best as possible. But the more right. windows you open, it's better for you. The better here's your circle, it's better. When we go on a missionary trip, we, 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 we open the window. Every window is open. You know, <laughs> I went to a place in Trinidad. They call it Mother. Movantil. It's like it's like matches lane, it's like Tivoli. It's a, it's a bad hero of um of Trinidad. And uh when we went there, these windows were not the, the one is what the one that you have to hope all the way out and, and thing like there was no burglar bar. And I remember I hope my window that someone can just easily well take me out, just lift me out through the window. But when we go out, Virgin, I remember that when you go out on this trip, when you're working for God, God will work for you. So sometimes we go out and there's a lot of mosquitoes in the night and, and things like that. The only thing that we do in the Virgin is we, we pray and we ask the Lord to don't let the mosquitoes them come in and trouble us any at all. And if they do, do come inside the house, let us stay there as, as... Yes, don't let any mosquitoes come in. And if they do come in, just let it be as a, a farm of um, um, the wings, just to, to fan us. You understand? 
Stephanos, right? So, um, it's important for us to get adequate amount of fresh air, right? In order for us to be able to be healthy, okay? I hope that um, we have learned and that the information was helpful. Um, Dr. Lamley will be now doing sunlight and um, 